I well, used to I used to bring I used to barnstorm the the dean of the departments at the university and stuff like that. <laughs> well, I love it because uh, you're also a guy who comes from a non-conventional background as far as education goes, and uh, uh, but again, in situations like yours, the proof is in the pudding. And, and uh, there's not, not much they can say when you lay down the mathematics and let these guys look at it. So, all right, so there's another, um, there's another sequence that's uh, as important or more important, Marco, and this is um, the 396, uh, 693 series. Let's talk about that a little bit and try to get as clear as we can on that, and then we'll talk a little bit more about implications and, and, and real-world applications of this stuff, all right? Mm-hmm. The thing is, is you don't shy away from trying to, uh, attempting to lead your audience into these more esoteric, complex things. And, and I, I commend you for your courage. Um, the discovery, in essence, is this simple. Um, everybody thinks that the base 10 system is made of nine numbers and that they're all the same system. It turns out that what I discovered is, is that 3, 9, and 6 are not a part of the 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. They're on two separate dimensions. They're two separate systems woven around each other helically. I mean, look at us. Everything in the world that we see physically externally is a coil. Why wouldn't even our numbers, if they had any connection to reality, they would also be, be a coil? Right, and, and, and uh, let me add something here, Marco. Again, when I was describing this circle and we were talking about tracing these lines from point to point, mm-hmm. if people... Uh, were observant or listening, they will recognize that we said one, two, four, eight, seven, five, and then back to one. Well, never there are nine. Line. Yeah, there are nine numbers on the outside of this circle, and we never touch three, we never touch six, and we never touch nine. And so we're going to touch those now. Well, um, the numbers three and six also end in the middle of nowhere on that circle. Three ends on three, and six ends on six. It looks like a pyramid or, or a triangle that doesn't connect on the base. What do you mean, if we do what to those numbers? Well, if you look at them, when you did 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, right. 3 and 6 never connected horizontally. They only connect on the 9. If we use the same doubling law, is that what you're talking about? If you, on the symbol you drew, okay. when you went to 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, right. 3 connected with 9 and 6 connected with 9. Yes. Um, but they never connected at the bottom. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's yeah. It's just an, it's just a uh, a point looking upward with 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 no base connecting because the six and the three. And only nine lines up over the center of infinity at the where the um, infinity overlaps and crosses over mm-hmm. on the axis. Yes, yeah. Turns out that the yin and yang is three and six. Everybody thinks that everybody thinks that the Chinese symbol, the yin and yang, represents um, duality. Mm. It doesn't. The minimum members of a set are three. The minimum numbers of any set. Of any set. With the, even the binary code is not based on a duality. It's just that has been everybody's mistake. I'm able to polarize the binary code. But before I go there, let's stick with the, the optical illusion of the yin and yang being a duality. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Okay. And for people, again, the yin and yang, we're talking about this ancient Chinese symbol. It basically looks like a little white fish wrapped around a black fish, and uh, they uh, have a little S-shaped curve that separates the two sides of a circle. So. Classically associated with martial arts or yes. surfing. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. <laughs> um, the three is the yin. The six is the yang. The de- definition of the yin and yang... Um, is that they must always equal only one or the other, that they must oscillate in a dance back and forth. So let me, let me ask you a question, though. The, it seems like a rather arbitrary uh, selection of numbers. In other words, three for the yin, six for the yin. Why couldn't we just choose, uh, you know, two and five? Or? Well, I'll even take it further. I'm going to, um, when, since we've done doubling and we've done halving and I, I'm defining... We've def- I define the qualities of 9 and 0. I'm going to define what I call fundamental physical property characteristics of all numbers. I'll go th- 1 through 8. But right now I'm going to stick with the 3 and 6. Okay. Because there's no other number than 3 and 6 if you double or half it, to answer your question, will equal the opposite other member. Ah, okay. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. But the 12, again, reduces 1 plus 2 equals 3. Mm-hmm. 24 is 6, 48 is 12 is 3. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, that answers it. I got you, I got you. 
these are these are axioms that can never be um, broken. Yeah, it's a mathematical law. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the three and six are yin and yang, but they only they never touch each other. They only connect with the number nine, the axis. The number nine is the S curve in the yin and yang in the center. And this is where the trinary idea comes in as, as opposed to a binary one, because that's the third element. It's the source and control. Huh. It makes, it's also referred to as a world boundary condition, which is relevant to uh, cosmology and astrophysics, which is what this is all modeling, which is vortices. So the oh, nine, right. whenever nine is positive, that's the beauty of this math, is because I can determine motion. And positive and negative in this system is not based on the classic Cartesian coordinate system, which is erroneous, with positive at the top, negative at the bottom, or right, left, etc. But it's based on positive as a positive emanation coming from the center outwards, creating what is called negative draft counter space, or negative, which is going in towards the center. Because what I'm modeling, I call it the dandelion puff principle. It's a wild statement, but I don't mind putting myself way out there. Dandelion puff principle because I'm modeling like a uh, like fireworks an emanation coming from the center out that creates negative draft counter space in. It's again we're talking about the primal source of every motion. Mm. So when nine's positive, three and six are both negative, and when nine's negative, three and six are both positive. It's the control. And again, it just bounces back and forth. The three and six are always. Um, 